All right, time for a brake job on this 2012 Mini Cooper 1.6 liter non-turbo with the six-speed manual. The brakes are rusted and corroded badly. So I'm putting new rotors and pads all the way around. Also changing the brake pad wear sensor that is on the front driver's side and rear passenger side in the brake pads. It's kind of interesting, I guess because it's a basically a BMW, but that's what I'm going to be doing. First, we want to replace, I'm just going to do one from each side for the video because they're the same from side to side, but we're going to do the rear passenger side first because that's where the wear sensor is and the sensor is actually broken on this side. The sensors are relatively cheap. I got all my parts from rockauto.com and so we're going to go ahead and change both of the wear pad sensors. Like I said, one of them is broken. And so that's what I'm going to do today. That's my little project for today. And it's a neat little car. A lot of fun to drive. Here we go. We're going to get started. First, we're going to break the tires loose on the with the studs. These are the... Uh, they're not studded um, wheel hubs like most might be used to. This actually has like a bolt and it's bolting, bolting the rim to the car. So we'll break those loose and show what I'm talking about. One thing I'm going to point out on this car is the lift points. This car is such a short wheelbase and so light that you really need to get a good lift point or you'll, instead of picking up just a corner of the car, you'll pick up the whole half of the car. And so uh, it's very, there's not a whole lot of good spots to really lift the car up from up under it. One spot I found that I'm gonna utilize is right there where the, um, I guess the rear control arms are bolted to the frame of the car. That's where I'm going to utilize a lift point to lift up this back corner of the car because I think that's probably the safest place to do it. And once I get it high enough, I'll put a jack stand up under it just to keep it safe. But then once I got that secured, it is a 17 millimeter to break those bolts loose. And so now they're already broken loose. I'll jack it up and jack stand and take the wheel off. All right, we're supported. There's an extra little spot right here. We can support it with a jack stand. So let's run these bolts off. See, that's what I'm talking about. Look at this. This is a little bit different than what we're used to where it's just bolted through like that. It's just kind of odd, not used to that. Gotta love how light these are. You can just one hand them, one hand lift them up. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to change these rotors, see how horrible they are. The pads are really not bad. It's just the rotors are so bad. And uh, they sound terrible when you gotta hit the brakes. They just sound awful. There's the wear, wear pad or brake pad wear indicator. Wires just cut, I don't know. Something cut them or they just hung up on something. But we're gonna be replacing that as well. It goes into right in here, right there. Okay, it's hard to get out. We'll get it out though once we take the caliper off. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. All right, see we got the caliper off. It's uh, very difficult to get it off without, you know, you have to just be careful because I have, I have broken pistons before, just going in, you know, bowl in the china shop, but you just walk that off real carefully so you don't break it. I don't know how fragile this one is, but it better be safe than sorry. It's better off to just do it up rotors and pads than having to do rotors, pads, and a caliper. But 
got it off uh, this right here very rusty um, this right here looks like somebody's had trouble with it before I had to actually use my old air hammer to uh, pop it loose somebody has cut grooves in this thing I don't know if it'll zoom focus it's hard to see but yeah that's not supposed to be a big old gouge like that but it is now it's put the air hammer up to it and it was able to spin it off and then now the rotor you can actually walk the rotor off without having to take the caliper bracket off completely it just comes right off and so there's that here is the wear pad sensor positioned right handily in the middle of that and see where this one is broken so that's probably why the abs light was on just saying we'll get that changed out too all right so i bolted the caliper back up just loosely so that i could screw in the caliper piston yes you heard that right screw it in uh, usually i use a c-clamp to just compress the piston but not on this one it's not the first time I've had to do this before this is uh, I had to do it before a on a uh, sort of like a Toyota matrix but so this tool is very handy it is uh, not sure exactly what it's called but it will uh, it's a brake caliper compression tool you put it in there it lines up you know you pick one of them line up and then you give it a spin it's, it's kind of hard to spin with one hand but it will spin and then you can uh, compress the it just basically screws it in and uh, that's how you do it without this tool about a ten dollar tool at rockauto.com sells it I've got it from them I've done it before without it but it's so much easier with this tool um, you gotta have it but yeah that's one uh, easier to me for me was to just bolt it back up and do it that way. I just got the bolts on loose but it keeps it in place so you can uh, spin it back in. And so now we'll uh, get ready to remove the the line here and put a new uh, sensor line in. It runs all the way back up here. It goes back and through here. It goes up to here and then it goes up into here. And we're going to run it all the way back up in here to where it goes so replace the whole line all right so we got the, the new line in or the uh, I say the new line the new wear pad indicator sensor ran it runs down right there and goes back up in there you just got to be just about got to be double jointed to do it especially you know you know doing it in a driveway laying down like this it's not the best uh, thank you many for doing that and uh, anyway, I always like to remove these caliper pins and I'll clean the old grease off of them with a little bit of WD-40 and then I'll just dip them in some fresh grease. Dip them in there good, get them good and slobbered up. And uh, we'll get it put back in here. I've already done the bottom one. And we'll just kind of put a little bit in there around that just kind of walk it in that way it kind of gets the grease all up in there good and there we go and so now that's that's ready we'll move on to the next step of putting the uh, the pads in right here and then we'll slide actually we'll put the rotor in first but first before we put the rotor in I like to clean the rotors with some brake parts cleaner which just works good on cleaning anything that's greasy but we'll wipe it off real quick with this and then we'll slide it on. Alright, so we got it all put back together. And everything looks good. We got the wire clip snapped back down to the brake pad wear indicator. It's all snapped down. Hooked back in. Right here it's got these little plastic clips that hold it to the other wires. And so we got it in new brakes. We'll put the wheel back on it. And they make an alignment tool that you can line these up with. 
to put it on. But I'm telling you, these wheels are so light, you can do it one-handed, just about. Let's see, Let's see if I can do it one-handed. Just about. Let's see. Spin it around. Line it up. Yeah, basically one-handed. Yeah, basically one-handed. I said they make the alignment tool, but it's not hardly necessary because the wheels are so light on this thing. They probably don't weigh 20 pounds. Put the breaker bar on it just to make sure it's, it's not too tight, but it's good and tight. And so, should be it. We're done on this side. Now we'll do the other side, and then we'll do the front. All right. So now we are on the driver's side, and I wasn't going to videotape anything for the driver's side because it's essentially the same as the passenger, except minus the wear pad sensor. We don't have to worry about on this side. But uh, you see that caliper there? I think it looks right new. And the reason it is new is because it is new. The old one, the the pads were way more worn on this side. They were almost to the actual metal backing of the pads. Um, so yeah, they were really bad over here on this side. So I had to uh, try to compress it right here, the old one right here, and it would not compress, like it would not go in at all. I even went against my better judgment and tried putting a drill on it to try to spin it in with the attachment, the caliper compression tool, and it would not run in. And so I ended up having to go and get a new caliper. Uh, O'Reilly's, I usually get my stuff at Rock Auto. I did the price comparison, and it was, cost a little more at O'Reilly's but after you do shipping and all that stuff, it's round about the same. And then I can go ahead and have it fixed today. But yeah, that's where we are. And uh, so yeah, the caliper would not compress. <coughs> and so I had to replace the caliper with a new one. So we'll bleed it out. And then we should get this, at least the back of this car done today.